this movie's basically a PSA about the dangers of low toner. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about Netflix's 2022 action comedy, The Man from Toronto. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. The Man from Toronto stars Kevin Hart, Woody Harrelson, and Jasmine Matthews, and was directed by Patrick Hughes. It tells the story of ordinary guy, Teddy Jackson, played by Kevin Hart, who is mistaken for the assassin known as the Man from Toronto, and must continue to play the role with the help of the real Man from Toronto. Action comedy can be a very tough genre to get right. Action and comedy do go together well, but it requires balance, and often a little bit of restraint, especially on the comedy side of things. I've actually had my eye on this film for a number of years now. The Man From Uncle-ish name is what initially caught my attention, but back then, this film was set to star Kevin Hart and Jason Statham, and that seemed like a perfect comedic pairing for this type of a story. But Statham dropped out over creative differences, and then the film fell victim to the perpetual delay cycle of 2020 and 2021, eventually losing its theatrical release altogether. Netflix picking it up probably wasn't the best sign, but these types of action comedies sometimes really work for me, so I was still willing to give it a shot. From a plot perspective, The Man from Toronto doesn't offer anything we haven't already seen before in similar films. Everything is predicated on a case of mistaken identity, where Kevin Hart's character, Teddy, is mistaken for an assassin known as the Man from Toronto. It probably doesn't take a professional screenwriter to guess that the scenario is gonna lead to a mismatched buddy comedy situation. It's all overly familiar and goofy, borderline dumb in its setup, but the premise had potential. Pairing an ordinary guy with a tough, globetrotting assassin could have been really funny and could have done some interesting things in terms of the story, but it really doesn't do either. The story hits the basic beats you expect, but somehow manages to be quite boring and doesn't feel like it goes anywhere. The inconsistent pacing and weak story certainly don't do this film any favors, but sometimes action comedies can get by and be decent on their action and comedy alone. The Man from Toronto is not one of those films. The action here feels like the bare minimum. There's one fight sequence towards the end of the movie that's decently entertaining, but it heavily uses an editing style that is sorta of cool at first, but gets irritating after a while, and isn't used anywhere else in the movie, so it feels out of place. Apart from that okay sequence towards the end, the action is just occasionally there, but isn't anything memorable. Unless, of course, we're talking memorable in a bad way, because there's some really terrible green screen and CGI, especially during one particular plane sequence. It's startlingly bad, to the point where I almost wonder if they forgot that they still had to do the effects for that sequence, and then just threw together some early PS3 graphics for it last minute. So the action's a non-starter, but what about the comedy? It's subpar. <laughs> Obviously, comedy is one of the most subjective things in film, so I'm sure there's somebody out there who will find this really funny, but for the most part, the jokes just didn't land for me. There are a few lines here and there that are kind of funny, but not enough to salvage the rest of it. Hart plays his character exactly how you expect him to, and exactly like many of his other characters. And although he's a bit much at times, I will say that his reactions to various things are the best moments of comedy in this film. Woody Harrelson, on the other hand, just feels very miscast here. He basically plays a less funny, more restrained version of Tallahassee from Zombieland, and it doesn't really work. Perhaps the biggest blow to the comedy, though, and probably to the film as a whole, is the lack of chemistry between Hart and Harrelson. There are some okay moments, but for a buddy comedy, you need two people whose comedic styles really mesh, and that just isn't the case here. So the comedy comes across feeling forced and largely unfunny, which is such a shame, because again, the premise had potential, and this could have been a really funny and entertaining movie with the right casting and a slightly better script. 
I still would have really liked to have seen Jason Statham playing the man from Toronto, as originally planned, and I think the chemistry would have worked a lot better, but having seen the film, I understand his creative differences and can't blame him for dropping out. Alright, let's talk about the pros and cons. Really, the only pro here was the premise. I'll admit, it's not the most original idea for an action comedy. There have been plenty of silly buddy comedies and mistaken identity films over the years, so aspects of it are certainly very familiar, but that doesn't mean it didn't have the potential to be fun. Kevin Hart is really good at playing this type of silly, out-of-his-element character, and if he had been paired with somebody who fit his comedic style a little bit better, I think this could have been a pretty decent film. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case, and the story just doesn't really do anything with its premise, so it's a bizarrely boring movie that doesn't go anywhere. On the con side, the biggest issue is definitely the humor. Like I mentioned before, I realize that comedy is subjective, so I also realize that there are probably people out there who think this film is hysterical, and if you're one of those people, I'm really happy for you, but I personally found this to be a largely unfunny film. Again, the solid premise had the potential for some really good humor, and if the chemistry between Hart and Harrelson had worked, and if the script and jokes were a little bit better, then I think this would have been really entertaining. But very few of the jokes end up landing, and it just becomes a tediously unfunny affair. Con number two is the pacing. This ties into the script issues that I mentioned before, but this movie just does not know what to do with its premise. It gets off to a slow start, and has these sporadic moments of excitement, but then just drags in between those moments. It's such an inconsistently paced film, so it makes it really hard to stay engaged with it. Even if you find the story interesting or like the characters, the movie genuinely makes it a challenge to stick through everything. There are a lot of kind of dull scenes that are sort of unnecessarily thrown in throughout the film, and this is one of those movies that feels like it's reached a natural ending about three or four times before it actually ends. The third con is the CGI. Compared to the other issues, this is a fairly minor problem, since it's not noticeably bad throughout the entirety of the film, but the sequences where it is a problem are really, really bad. There's a fight sequence that occurs on a plane near the halfway point of the film, and it features some laughable green screen and CGI. It almost looks like they did an effects pre-viz mock-up to show what they were envisioning for the scene, but then just never went back in to replace it with the finalized CGI. It's pretty ridiculous looking, and is very reminiscent of mid-2000s video game graphics. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying any of the films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give The Man from Toronto two out of five paws. This one started out closer to two and a half paws for me, but just went downhill over the course of the runtime. It has a decent, if very familiar, premise, but just doesn't do anything interesting with it. Instead, it's a poorly paced, unfunny film with a very surprising lack of chemistry between its two leads. I would recommend The Man from Toronto to somebody looking for a movie they can just throw on in the background. Fans of action comedies are probably going to be fairly disappointed with this one, but if you like some of Netflix's other similar output, you might be one of those people who finds this one decent. If you liked The Man from Toronto, I would recommend Central Intelligence. This is another movie where Kevin Hart plays an ordinary guy who gets wrapped up in a ridiculous situation. In this film, he's paired with Dwayne Johnson, and they have much better chemistry together. If you liked Woody Harrelson here, then you might want to check out Zombieland. The actual character he plays is fairly different, but from a personality standpoint and a performance perspective, there are some definite similarities between The Man from Toronto and Tallahassee, even apart from the whole T-City thing. And if you liked this kind of frenetic action comedy with a mismatched pair of leads, you should check out The Hitman's Bodyguard. That's another film directed by Patrick Hughes, and is similarly overzealous with its comedy, but Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson have decent comedic chemistry with each other. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen The Man from Toronto? If so, 
What'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie about mistaken identity? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.